Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and welcome to the Immune System Podcast. In this podcast, I wanted to start with a little history. These are some beautiful illustrations from the Florentine Codex, which is thousands of pages long. It was created over about 45 years by this guy, um, this friar, and basically what he did is he studied Aztec culture and how it changed over his lifetime. So we've converted a lot of this to English, and you can find some of it on Wikipedia. It's just fascinating. So you can see these rituals and these chieftains, and he would describe all of it. But a sad part of that is that he describes how smallpox came to and devastated the Aztecs, and it's one of the reasons why the Spanish were able to conquer them. And so they didn't have immunity to it, and that's what this is about. So basically what happens with any kind of an infection, a viral infection like this, is you have a virus, and that virus is essentially going to gain entry inside your cells. It's going to use the machinery of your cell to make copies of itself, and more copies of itself, and more copies of itself. And eventually, it's going to destroy the cell, and it's going to spread off to infect other cells. And so that seems awful. Uh, in other words, when you get a cold, what's happening is that your cells are making viruses, which are spreading to more cells. And if it weren't for our immune system, we would be devastated by all the viruses that are around us. And so we have to have protection. And so I like the analogy of a castle. A castle needs protection as well. And so if you're building a castle, you have to think about a few ways to defend yourself. First of all, you have to defend yourself from the outside. So it's good to have a moat. Uh, it's also to have good to have a, a really large wall, so it's hard for people to get over it. And this castle is great because it's got water on all sides of it. You also have to have soldiers, so if anybody were to ever get close to the gate, you could shoot them with arrows or pour hot tar on them. Uh, but if they were to breach the wall, you have to be able to fight them th there as well. But probably when you're defending a castle, a uh, more important thing is you have to have intelligence. You have to have spies that are, uh, are sent out to surrounding areas to do reconnaissance and figure out what's going on, to recognize invaders when they come. And so I'm going to quit talking about castles and we're going to talk about the immune system, but the same thing works inside us. And so um, the idea of a castle wall. Let's start with that. And so what protects us from infection? Our castle wall is going to be our skin. And so what our skin provides us with is it provides us with a barrier. So there's going to be a barrier of cells, dead cells on the top and keratin on the top. It's also going to have a really low pH which makes it hard for any kind of bacteria to live there. And we're also going to have um, chemicals on the surface of our skin that are going to disrupt um, certain viruses and also we're going to have bacteria that crowd out our skin and so it makes it hard for other bacteria to gain entry. We're going to have what are called normal flora that just live on our skin. And so all of this is going to provide protection against infection. But occasionally you know that that get br gets breached. Occasionally you cut yourself or a pinprick or something like that gains entry. And so uh, that would be just like the soldiers making it over the wall. And so what do we have? Well, we have a call to arms. We have inflammation. So basically we have chemicals that are released that cause our body to respond to that. Now, you constantly are being infected, especially if you're a teenager, because you get acne. So what is acne? Acne is essentially a infection in the pores of your skin. So it's bacteria that are living and feeding inside uh, our body. And so how do we fight that? Well, we'll plug it up for one thing, but we have swelling. So we're gonna increase the heat, but basically we're gonna send soldiers in there. And those soldiers are the macrophages. Those are going to be the eaters or the big eaters. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna find anything that's not part of our body and they're gonna eat it. So any invader is called an antigen. And so basically what a macrophage will do is it'll notice that it, this is not part of our body. It'll grab onto it. It'll take it into the macrophage. It'll secrete lysosomes and enzymes into it, which break it up. It'll lots of times present that on its surface, uh, but eventually gets rid of it. And so this is an actual picture of a macrophage, and you can see it's grabbing, I don't know if it's viruses or bacteria on either side. And so that's great. Um, but the one thing about it is that it attacks anything that's not us. In other words, if you get a heart implant from someone else or you get a heart transplant, those macrophages are going to attack it as well. It's going to kill that. And so we also have what's called a specific immune response. Specific immune response is more like the spies. And so basically, here's an antigen again. An antigen is going to have specific proteins on its surface. But to fight that, we use what are called antibodies. And so the, the name antigen means an antibody generator. 
In other words, it generates the formation of antibodies. So what are antibodies? Antibodies are going to be proteins produced by our body. And basically, they all look the same. They're this Y kind of a shape. So they're a Y shape like this. We produce almost an infinite number and an infinite variety of them. But at the top of the Y, you're going to have different shapes. In other words, you're going to have a shape that looks like this, but you're also going to have an equal shape that might look like this. And you're going to have an equal shape that might look like this. And so we're going to have all of these different shapes at the top, but we're only going to produce the shape for the one thing that we're infected by. So basically the antibody will dock to the antigen. And when it does that, basically it marks the antigen so macrophages can find it. And it also makes them harder for, for them to do their job. Imagine if I had another antibody here and another antibody here and another antibody here. It's hard for them to do their job. And so when you gain immunity, specific immunity or specific immune response, what that means is you have the ability to produce these antibodies. And that's why when you have a cold, you're not going to get that same cold again. And so basically, how do we do this or how does this work? Well, we need what are called lymphocytes. Lymphocytes are a type of white blood cell. And so basically there are two types of lymphocytes. There are B lymphocytes and then there are T lymphocytes, which we'll get to in just a second. Okay, so B lymphocytes are made in the bone marrow and they're responsible for a humoral response. Now this term I'm going to show you a couple more times in this podcast. Humoral means in the fluid or in the humors of your body. So that means in the blood, in the lymph material, uh, in the lymph vessels, in the interstitial fluid. And so humoral response, what I want you to think about, is going to be any time there are viruses free in the fluids of our body. And what the B lymphocytes do is they produce antibodies. So how does that work? Basically you have a naive B cell it's going to sense the shape of the antigen. I'll tell you how that works in just a second. But basically what it's going to do is it's going to produce antibodies. And so what B lymphocytes do is they produce all of these antibodies that are specific that for the antigen. So in other words, if we're infected by this virus, we'll call this virus A1, then we're going to produce antibodies for that specific antigen. We're also going to produce memory B cells so that we have that immunity for the rest of our life. So those are the B lymphocytes. And so you might think, if they attack the viruses out inside the, our body, then what do the T lymphocytes do? Well, the T lymphocytes are responsible for cell-mediated response. What does that mean? They're going to target and kill the cells inside our body that are already infected. Okay, so what are the T lymphocytes? Where are they made? They're in the made in the thymus gland, which kind of sits on top of our heart. Um, Basically what they do is they create what are called killer T cells or killer T lymphocytes. And so a killer T cell is an activated T cell. Basically what it'll do is it'll find any of the cells inside our body that are infected with a virus. It'll dock next to them and it will kill our own cells. And so it's going to kill any of the cells inside our body that are infected by the virus or even cancerous cells it's going to kill them. And so it's made in the thymus and it produces cell death inside us. And so the T lymphocytes are responsible for the cell mediated, I mean killing cells inside our cells that are infected. B lymphocytes are going to be in the humors of our body. And so if I were to summarize this a little bit, this would be the humoral response up here. So what type of cells are responsible for that? Those are going to be the B cells. And here's the cell mediated down here. Those are going to be the killer T cells. And so before we get to that, let's look over here on the left side. So basically what's happening, we've got an antigen that is eaten by a macrophage. That macrophage is going to chop up that antigen. It's going to present pieces of it on its surface. And so we use a chemical called a MHC2. It's Major Histocompatibility Complex 2. It's going to present the shape of that antigen on its surface. And now we get this cell right here, which is super important. It's called the T helper cell. What the T helper cell is going to do is it's going to dock and it's going to physically sense the shape of that antigen. It uses another protein called CD4 and it's going to sense the shape of that antigen. The helper T cell is responsible for initiating both the humoral and the cell mediated immune response. So let's see what helper T cell is going to do. Helper T cell is going to tell that shape to the B cells and so it can produce more antibodies. It's going to activate macrophages so it can kill more of them inside 
the humors of our body. So it's responsible for that humoral response. And the helper T cell is also going to activate the killer T cells so they can kill the cell mediated, or excuse me, the cells that are infected by a virus. And so if it isn't for these guys, if it isn't for the helper T cells, we're out of luck. Now sadly, helper T cells are the cells that are infected by HIV or people who have AIDS. And so you can see why that's a really bad thing, because without the helper T cells, we can't fight normal infections. So if you have HIV, you don't die of that. You're dying of normal infections that we would fight off. So let me kind of do this in cartoon style if we were to animate it again. So what we've got here is our antigen. Remember, that's our invader. And so basically what's going to happen is it is going to um, be eaten by a macrophage. So the macrophage will take it in. It'll secrete enzymes into it, which are going to digest that antigen. It'll get rid of it, but it's also going to grab onto a little bit of that. It's going to grab on with this major MHC. It's going to take its shape out to its surface, and now we have helper T cell. What's helper T cell going to do? Helper T cell is going to dock with that macrophage, and it's going to sense the shape of that antigen. It's now going to become an activated helper T cell. So thinking back to that flowchart just a second ago, where does it go next? Well, it can activate macrophages, but more importantly, it's going to activate B cells. So now we've got an activated B cell. It's going to activate killer T cells. And now, through clonal selection, it's basically they're going to make clones of themselves. We're going to have a whole bunch of activated B cells. And we're going to have a whole bunch of activated killer T cells. So now, thinking about it, this on the top is going to be the humoral response up here, and this down here is going to be the cell-mediated response. And so basically, we can fight those antigens out here in the humors of the body. We do that by sticking antibodies to it so macrophages can uh, eat it, break it down. We also inactivate them a little bit. But if you look down here, that killer T cell is docked with a cell inside our own body that's already infected by an antigen. And so it's going to secrete enzymes into it that are going to break that down. So it's going to kill that. And so basically what we've done is we've killed them in the humors or in the fluids of the body, and then we've killed cells that are infected. And so this takes a while, but it's going to be your immune response, and it's specific to that antigen. Until we get that specific antigen, we're not going to produce the antibodies for it. So let's talk about a cold, because I'm getting a cold right now. So basically what happens is you're exposed to the cold right here. The virus is going to start reproducing inside my body, and it's going to take me a little while for me to start building memory, excuse me, B cells and killer T cells. And so there's going to be a lag time, but essentially I'm going to produce a whole bunch of antibodies and affected effector T cells. So that's going to increase inside my body. And this time right here is where I actually feel like I have a cold. So this is me feeling like I have a cold. But really what's happening is it's my body fighting and killing off all the viruses. And so let's say I get exposed to that same cold again in the future. Well, in the future, I'm going to get exposed to it. But since I have so many antibodies, I'm going to produce them so quickly. And since I have these memory B cells and memory T cells that are just hanging out, I'm going to fight off and kill that infection before I even realize that I have a cold. And this could be years later. Now, how could colds get around this? And they do get around it. Well, they can have a bunch of different types. And colds, I think, have 100 different types of rhinoviruses. But they also can mutate. And if they mutate, they change the shape of the antigen. And now those antibodies aren't going to work anymore. And so that's the immune response. If you think of it this way, it's like keeping the invaders out of the castle. You're at least one step closer to understanding the immune system. And I hope that's helpful.